Ja, det är klockan. Jag måste gå och kolla på barnen. Är klockan stängd? Jaha. Det är bra, hur är det? Jo. Jag delade upp allting, mm. men jag, jag såg sen att jag delade upp i Det är sjuk. ingenting som stänger här uppe. Vi får ju aldrig ha semester. Nej, det är på morgonen då. Nästa Oj. dag. Mm. 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 Vad har du haft nu gör de då? Ja, jag frågar. Jo. Är hon där? Ja, det tar. Åh, nå, 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 Hello everyone, it has been snowing a lot here during the holidays. Tova's family were here celebrating New Year's Eve with us and uh, about 20 minutes into the new year we heard a crash and it seems like the snow got the better of this spruce tree here and it is now blocking our path to the hay barn so we need to do something about it So the whole of December was somewhere between minus 5 to plus 5 degrees Celsius and now it is minus 20 degrees Celsius so really frosty. On this channel we like to keep it to old tools and old techniques and the old aesthetics or how to say but we are no purists so we use what is necessary and what we can get a hold on. I guess even though we always try to think about how how things are done or where done without the use of industrial technologies 
so I guess the chainsaw is the machine that has been seen most on this channel, but some snowmobile and some tractor has been seen. We haven't been able to save up for a tractor or our own snowmobile yet, even though Tuva has been searching for a snowmobile now. But the second hand price on those are really high. I don't know what's up with that. Compared to cars you have to pay very much to get some really old scrappy looking snowmobile. That's interesting. I have no idea why it's like that. So we borrowed a snowmobile from Tuva's dad to be able to drive up some uh, tracks so that we can ski with Malva. It's really hard when the snow gets knee deep here and I can ski with the wooden skis everywhere but if I want to ski with Malva I need I need her to be able to to run on something harder. And when we moved here when the first snow came someone took out the snowmobile and and made some tracks. We'd immediately have somewhere to ski with Malva. But in recent years there seems to be less and less of driving at least around here. So so we need to do that ourselves. And I guess it's nice to be able to ourselves decide where we want the tracks to be. So we can make really nice skiing routes for Malva. I'm a little bit torn whether we should get a snowmobile or not. Uh, it would be nice, I guess, if something would happen and there is too much snow and nobody has plowed the road, so we are stuck here. I guess it would be nice to have a a snowmobile. But it's also a good working tool to get timber out of the forest and and so on. But since I'm really bad with motor vehicles or fixing motors, I don't know if I'm ready for yet another thing that breaks. I would rather get horses, but that's a large project as well. The problem when nobody has been driving up some snowmobile tracks is that when you're first and the snow is really deep, you can easily get stuck. So let's go skiing with Malva.
after our last video, a lot of people have asked what the thing we had in the jar that we eat for breakfast is. So I thought I would explain that a little more. In Sweden, it's called filmjölk and it's simply fermented milk. Filmjölk has a very nice sour taste. The kind of filmjölk that we have here is called longfil and it has a very nice stretchy consistency. I have written a text about filmjölk and we are going to put it on our English blog on our website. So if you want to know more of it, you can go and read some. And now I'm going to show you how we do when we have eaten it all, almost all. We have these four liter jars and now this was full and we have eaten down to here and we always save about four deciliters maybe in the bottom. Ouch. <laughs> Spicy. It's fermented so it's very much alive. So I'm just taking what's left. Last night we fetched some fresh milk from the farmer, so it's raw and nice and uh, not destroyed in any way. So you just pour the milk on top of the long fill. Shake it a little bit. So it spreads around and just leave it on the counter for 12 to 24 hours. It depends on what temperature you have inside and what temperature the milk has and how alive the bacteria is. So tomorrow, this time, we will have new long fill that we can eat. And next time it's almost finished, we do the same again. So it's a never ending circle. But as I said, if you want to know more about it, I have written a lengthy blog post on our website. So I guess it can be interesting to know a little bit more of it. It's the next morning and the fermented milk is thick and creamy. Its taste is sour because the bacteria has eaten most of the lactose. We eat it with some raw egg yolk and blueberries that we picked in the summer right outside this cabin. 
After this, we put the jar somewhere cold and it will keep for a week or so, but we eat it all up in a couple of days. We also make kefir that are made with the typical kefir grains. The kefir has a very different bacterial culture and is even more sour. Our kefir certainly looks like it has been influenced by the long feel. Oj, nu blir det klätet på linsen. Givar. One thing I'm wondering about when we are making these videos is that how often can we repeat ourselves? We have made a lot of episodes and our daily life here is more or less the same. Seasonal changes and 
progress with all the building projects or other projects and learning about regenerative agriculture and so there is new aspects I guess to these videos but but often when new people find a particular video we get the same questions over and over again and we try to make the frequently asked questions blog post on our website we should probably link that in every video I guess but I don't know what do you think you who have followed our journey since the first couple of videos or you who have binge watched binge watched binge 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 watched binge <laughs> or you who have binge watched every video we have made we get some comments that there are a lot of you who have started from the beginning of our journey and watched our first episodes that's always nice to hear I guess then you will have seen how the video making process have evolved over the years we have learned a lot and and we have lots to learn yet why I was thinking about this now is because when I was here and poked away some of the eyes I was thinking to myself that should I tell the story of, of how we need to remove the eyes when it's below minus 20 degrees and how it grows and covers our place where we get water so we every day need to poke away some of it so it doesn't seal up en entirely I have put some stones here and made a place where the moving water is moving along more swiftly than on the other places here so that helps a lot to not get this place frozen up I really enjoy this place by the stream it's so nice and particularly right now just this time when it has started to get colder and it starts to freeze up and the snow covers the rocks and, and uh, there is patches of water still open the beauty is undescribable We thought that we would take it a little bit easy for a couple of weeks in January. No. Uh, it went not so well, I guess. <laughs> we have had really cold. Mm. Minus 25 degrees. A lot. Yeah, uh, almost every day for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then we had a lot of snow two, two times. Yeah. Mm. And we had some fortunes and misfortunes mm. with uh, with a lot of things also Ivar's fifth tooth <laughs> emerged so we have had some sleepless nights and evenings is it that right <laughs> so everything that has been happening in this video has taken place during january mm. As usual, we want to thank all the nice patrons we have mm. that makes these videos possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. And also say hi and welcome to all the new patrons that has found mm. found our channel. Yeah. 
So thank you. That means very much. With all the new people that has found this channel now, we are, we have gotten a lot of comments that we should build wind turbines or water turbines or uh, get a better battery bank or mm. all the things that would make this life a little bit easier. Mm. <laughs> but uh, we are very interested in all those things, but, but these things takes a while for us because we need to save up money for all these projects and also we don't have time uh, uh, researching and, and so eventually we will probably get a better uh, off-grid electrical system but it is what it is now and yeah. we manage well in time Mm. 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 Since we were skiing with Malva in this video, we have gotten 60 centimeters of snow. More or less. On top of that. Yeah. And that makes it really hard to make new tracks. Yeah, all the tracks are gone yeah. and no one wants to venture with a snowmobile because it's too deep and they get stuck. Yeah. So at least with these snowmobiles that, yeah. that we can uh, we have access to. Mm. So I don't know if we are going to have any more tracks this winter. I'm going to have to go to the village and ski with you, Marva. Mm. Mm. So, mm -hmm. but it's beautiful outside. Mm. A lot of snow and it's about 20 mm. degrees Celsius minus outside mm. and the moon is out. So it's really, really beautiful. We should take a moonlit walk in the evening. That's the best kind of walk. Mm. So I guess that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and we see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. klockan är dags för dig att gå och lägga dig. Nej, nej, nej. Ska vi nog leka lite? Mm. Mm. Eller hur? Vad säger du? Mm. Jaha, ska jag sätta mig och editera färdigt här då? Okay. Hey, da. Hey, da.